Hi, and welcome to this talking head video. This video is going to actually be regarding a question that I've recently received, and I've received this one a few times as well. Um, but before I get into that exactly is I want to thank everyone that's watching this video or that has watched videos in the past that subscribed to my channel. We're now at 13,000 subscribers. That is quite amazing. I always say it all the time. I never really expected it to get here. Uh, but without further ado, let's actually deep dive into the question that I've recently received. And I've gotten a few times, which is really what books I would recommend on a learning PowerShell. Um, so I actually have two books that I'm going to be showing you guys today that I've used quite a bit. And it's especially useful if you actually work as a system administrator or if you just work in IT um, and you're able to use PowerShell in your environment. I find these two books are probably going to be some of the most useful books that you can really get. And then I'm going to also mention some other books that I think are definitely worth a mention. I haven't used them, so I can't vouch for them uh, personally. And then we'll deep dive into some other things that I think will actually really help you guys learn PowerShell if that's what you guys are trying to do um, and hopefully land that position that you guys are trying to land. So the first book that I have here uh, really uses PowerShell 5.1. Uh, which is the PowerShell version that does come with uh, Windows 10 and Windows 11. So if you don't want to do any extra setup um, or anything like this, it is PowerShell for sysadmins um, by Adam Bertram. Uh, so this one uses, again, like I said, PowerShell 5.1. Uh, so it does not use PowerShell 7, but the good thing is a lot of the code will actually just work in PowerShell 7. Um, so you don't really have to worry about that. I'd probably still go ahead and maybe just practice using PowerShell 5.1 like it does in the book, especially if you're just starting off. It just makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to configure VS Code. You can just use the PowerShell ISC that comes uh, pre-installed on your Windows 10 or Windows 11 box, uh, especially if you're learning. I think that that is a great, great start. Um, there's a bunch of projects as well in here. Um, it's going to teach you um, some Active Directory um, stuff as well. Uh, let me just see here. There's quite a few good examples in here uh, to do. It'll teach you how to actually manipulate Azure uh, and AWS. Um, it will also teach you how to make your own module. There is a lot on here. Um, a lot of it is on my channel as well. Um, this was one of the books, again, that I've read. So a lot of the projects and ideas that I have uh, a lot of them stem from this book and I just expanded upon them in my videos. Um, so again, PowerShell for sysadmins, uh, definitely a very, very good book. Um, and I would recommend this one as your first book um, over the other one that I'm about to show, um, but that will be the first one. And I'll also put a link, I'll try to find all of these on Amazon and post the link in the description down below so you guys will be able to access them as well. Um, so the second one is by Thomas Lee, and this is PowerShell 7 for IT professionals. Uh, so this one is pretty hefty. It definitely goes into a lot of detail. Again, there's a lot of Active Directory. There's a lot of Hyper-V in here, uh, managing printers, uh, code signing. Uh, so a lot of stuff that you're going to be doing with PowerShell, but also covers this. That one doesn't cover as much of the basics um, as the PowerShell for system admins, I find. Uh, but those are two really, really good books to learn PowerShell, I find. Um, and the PowerShell 7 for IT professionals, of course, as the title says, is PowerShell 7. So a lot of the code in PowerShell 7 um, does work in PowerShell 5.1, um, but there are quite a few commands that do not. Um, so definitely that one is going to be one where you're going to have to set up VS Code. Luckily, I do have a video on how to set up PowerShell in VS Code. Uh, so I'm also going to put that in the description down below in case you do get that book. Um, you want to set up Visual Studio Code with PowerShell. Uh, there's a very easy tutorial to follow along there. Uh, some of the other books that are definitely worth a mention here that I've known people to read. I have personally not read them myself, um, but it's Learn PowerShell in a Month of Lunches. Um, so that one is very, very good. And then that one is by Travis Plunk, James Petty, and Tyler uh, Leonhardt. I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Um, it's the There is a fourth edition, and that one covers Windows, Linux, and Mac OS with PowerShell. Um, so that could give you quite a bit of an advantage. It does cover a lot more. 
Uh, so that one is really good. And also Windows PowerShell step-by-step. -step. Uh, so that one is written by, I believe it's even by Microsoft. Uh, but let me just go look here. Windows step-by-step -step PowerShell. Um, so that one is by Ed Wilson. Yeah, and it does have the Microsoft logo on it. Um, it is an e intermediate book, um, but I believe that it covers from the beginning uh, to the end as well. So that should be fine um, for anyone learning. Some of the other tips that I really have for learning PowerShell that really go beyond the books and beyond these videos that I do, um, because you you might have the similar problem if you're using the same strategy of learning via a book compared to learning via videos is you might get stuck on what a lot of content creators and a lot of people uh, that write tutorials will call tutorial hell, um, where that's basically you can perform, you can do very well while you're watching the video, you can follow along, you can code it, everything is working. As soon as there is no tutorial, your brain just kind of does not compute. You can't think of examples. Uh, so I kind of want to give my own little spin on maybe how to get out of tutorial hell and how to maybe solidify your learning a little bit more. Uh, so one of my most recent videos that I have is, and I've had a lot of traction on this, and someone asked me if they could put it on the resume. You definitely can. Um, I've replied to that person as well, saying that they can. Any videos that you see of mine, um, if you want to build it and put it on your portfolio, uh, by all means, you can put it in there. If you want to give me credit, feel free as well. It's not something that I definitely require. But something that I would actually recommend, instead of just making that scanning for open ports project and posting it on your resume, and then especially if you're crediting the YouTube video that's coming from, which of course you probably should because it's not really your knowledge that you're, you've retained that knowledge, you you know it, but if it's exactly the same as the YouTube video, it doesn't really show that that employer that you really know how to like do anything extra on top of that. So for the scanning the open ports, what I would do is maybe add features or modify features on a tutorial. Um, so again, for the scanning of open ports, what I would probably do is add a feature where you have a list of servers or computers that it'll check um, periodically and check to see if those ports are open. And then maybe use a PS write HTML to generate a report on what ports are open, what ports are closed. Maybe keep a history of what ports are open and what ports are closed in there as well. And then maybe even send off an email if there are a specific port that is open that should be closed, maybe that will trigger an email. Uh, again, all of those individual things, like I have a video on how to do PS write HTML. I have a video on how to create an email. Now, all of those are different tutorials, but you'd have to combine these and really come up with the logic yourself on, okay, what's gonna trigger this email to happen? So you really have to start working on your conditional statements, which that's really where programming is really gonna stand, is on how well you're good at breaking down problems and problem solving. Because really, going from one programming language to the next, like if you know PowerShell, or if you know JavaScript, or if you know Python, going to a different language is usually a lot easier because you already know the basics of programming, which every programming language basically has the same. There are some other deeper languages uh, like C and C++ that if you know those, you'll definitely have an advantage because they have a very different way of working, especially with C with pointers. Um, but as long as you know what an if statement is, what a switch statement is, and when to use those, um, and knowing for loops, while loops, and knowing when to use those, that's what's really probably going to set you apart on making these types of additional uh, feature tutorials. And then you have something very, very big to put on your resume. Not only did you make an application to scan ports, but you also created something that will actually report back to you and alert you on if something needs to be looked at. Um, so creating a script is nice, but you'll have to run it every time. So if you add those additional features, that adds a lot 
of functionality and a lot of benefit and the employer will see that for sure um, and they'll see that effort and they'll see the tutorials is not just a basic tutorial but it is actually a full-fledged application and there's a lot more that you can do there's you can probably do that with almost every single tutorial that i have is take one tutorial maybe take another like two free tutorials and just combine them together um, and logically make them work um, or if you see a video that I have made um, and you think that ah, I'd actually really like to have this feature, um, maybe just add that feature. Eventually, you'll be really, really good at adding features and then you'll just be able to create your own projects because at one point it'll be so far from where it was at the beginning. It'll really be your own. Um, so that is my really, really big tip, because a lot of these books that I've showed will have projects. They will have automation. They have some automation of Active Directory, but definitely not a whole lot. Uh, if you do want to learn how to automate Active Directory, I do have like a full blown, I think it's like 10 videos or something that will help you automate that. But even that, you can actually take it further than what I've actually shown on my YouTube videos as well. Um, so I think that's really going to be your guys' best bet. But once again, I thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the 13,000 subscribers. I can't believe that we are here. If you guys want me to deep dive or do a review or explore the books with you guys or have any other questions for me, please let me know in the comment section. I really, really want to help you guys out. I've had quite a few emails recently of you guys landing jobs and some of you guys trying to land jobs and getting some extra learning material. Um, and that's where the book question came in. Uh, so hopefully this helps you um, land that cybersecurity job that you were trying to land. I won't mention any names um, just in case I don't know if the person wanted to be mentioned. Um, but feel free to ask down below anything and I will definitely expand and share with the community because I think a lot of people can benefit from these types of questions. Also, feel free to hit that like button. Also, hit that subscribe button. And also, be sure to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.